All right, so this is going to show you how to make the rain splashes that you saw in the other tutorial. More specifically, the uh, the splashes from the rain falling. So the first thing you need to start out with is a simple static mesh here. If you go to wireframe here, you can see it's just, um, I took a cylinder and 3ds Max, and I shrunk down the bottom and removed the top and bottom polygons. And then I applied a material. All right, so this material just has the bio rifle splash effect texture. And all that I did is I went and I, I didn't want to put too much work into it. So I, I set it to translucent, unlit, and two-sided. Now, I don't want it to be green. You can see if I plug in all the colors, it'll be green. And I really don't want that. But if I plug just one color in, it'll just take the, the whiteness of that color. And then for opacity, and this is the effect you get when you apply it to your your static mesh. The whole thing is actually a particle effect. So what we want to do here is go and new particle system, and we'll name it. Uh, I'm going to name it ripples too because I've already got a ripples. And this this is what your particle emitter will look like to begin with, and that's not at all what you want. So. Alright, so we'll go and find that, that mesh that we just had and select that in the, the content browser. Right click here, new data type, mesh data. Alright, so and you can see it, it looks like it just disappears. So we're going to get rid of some of these that we don't need. Alright, select mesh data and then you want to put in your mesh that we just were showing you. Alright, so we've gotten rid of all the color information though. So what you want to do is go down to color, initial color, then here you go. Uh, initial size, you want to scale down a bit, probably. Alright, so that is something a little bit more manageable. Alright, then the next thing you want to do is you need some size data in there so that it changes size and you want size by life so right now its lifetime is set by default to just a one second lifetime and right now with size by life by default it's just gonna put in there and say it wants to be one at the beginning of its life and one at the end of its life alright so let's actually make that so that it's zero at the beginning of its life and zero at the end of his life. All right. All right, so before we do anything else, we should go to spawn and change the constant down to one. All right, so what we have right now is it's gonna start at zero, the size will be zero, and it'll end at zero. So let's take this and we'll make this one, one, and point one. And you can see right now it starts basically just, um, it doesn't do much of anything really, it just kind of expands. So we need something in there in the middle. So if you click this insert new item before this item, let's make that an in value of 0.5, which means that halfway through its life it'll do this. And let's make it 1, 1, and 1. Alright, and that doesn't look so bad. So you have to remember the whole thing will be going by really fast. So what we want to do now is go and switch the lifetime. And we'll make it 0.25 and see how that looks. That's probably good to start out with. Now, now the thing is though, you really don't want just one to spawn. Otherwise you have to place them all by hand. So you want the initial location. Sorry, initial location. And you need to figure out how wide you want your area. We'll make it 256 by 256. So since this is the max and min, what you really want to do is 128, 128, negative 128, and negative 128 for the x and y coordinates. But you don't want a z. All right, now that's really not looking very good. So you, what you want to do is you want to go and crank up the, sp the spawn rate. 
so that's going to be over a wider area. You can see though, uh, if this is an area of, of um, uh, you know, 256 units, those look like really big drops. All right, so let's bring this in and see what it looks like real quick. And you can see those are really big raindrops. So what we want to do is go back and change initial size. Let's try a 0.25 and see where that goes. All right, well, they're definitely smaller now. They're still probably too big. And the size will depend completely on your own mesh. So it'll it'll depend on... Uh, or so if you're if you're not using a mesh the same size as mine, these numbers won't work for you. So you'll want to try some different things. But you can see also as I make them smaller, that it looks like they're more spread out. So we're gonna crank the spawn rate up again. All right, you can see they're they're looking better. And the thing is, in a game like Unreal Tournament. Um, or any fast-paced game like that, you're probably not going to ever really stop to get close enough to see much. So, for something like that, a bigger raindrop would probably be better. So, you can make it smaller though also, of course. And another thing is, uh, minimum and maximum size. That's going to make a big difference also. So if you want them all to be the exact same size, these numbers need to be the same. And I'm going to crank the spawn rate up again, just so I can really show you here. Uh, for the actual tutorial that I did earlier, this is the one that I showed you, or this is the one that was in there. So they're pretty small raindrops. And, yeah. And that's pretty much the finished result. So you can just kind of tweak the numbers there to get exactly how you want. But, and that's, that's pretty much all there is to it.